Welcome to Exposition. On this show, we're going to talk about the artisan market in Gown Police, Ohio. It's this one over here. So stay tuned. Welcome to Exposition, and this time we are going to look at the artisan market and shop and studio and whatever else. And we have Valerie Thomas, as always, and daughter Kelsey, who both run the artisan market and shop Yay! and studio. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> <What is? laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so let's get some history. So, how did the artisan Market. Shop. Shop. Market. Market. Start. It started with the market. Market started. Yeah. Okay. You go. Okay. <laughs> so we, um, I'd been away from Gal Police most of my adulthood and lived in Orlando, Florida. And where you were exiled. I was exiled. <laughs> and um, had a couple children, and this is one of them. Kelsey Kerr, and she and I came to Gal Police because Steve Thomas asked me to marry him, and I said, oh my gosh, since I was five years old, I've been waiting for this question. So we came up here, and we looked for jobs, and um, we loved the farmer's market, but we found out that they're set up so they couldn't have artisans involved. And because you, you've been an artist your whole life, and uh, your mom is an art therapist, so you were looking for, you know, a place to belong. So, right. Yeah. And I thought if I'm looking for something like an artisan market, then others that do art and crafts and things like that would probably be looking for the same thing. So um, we started the artisan market to fulfill that need. And so the, the beginning of it was more of an outlet for uh, artists who sell their goods. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Not so much the classes and all that sort of thing. Right, okay. right. It was just like a farmer's market, but more of, you know, things people made or created. Home crafters and, or mm -hmm. whatever. Yes. Yeah. Any, it, it, everything from crafting to um, fine arts and mm -hmm. things like that. All, all the other farmer's markets that we had been to in Orlando and other places, they always had the mix of the you know, plants and farmers market people and like baked goods and then they also had people with paintings and artists and crafters hmm. so we thought, you know, why don't they have that here? Why, what was the rule that held that back from the farmers market? The, <clears throat> their, uh, Which I don't think that rule, rule is here, is it in Rio? I don't no, think so. I think no. they include both automatically, okay. like from mm -hmm. the beginning. Right. Yeah. Um, the farmers market downtown was set up you had to either be able to grow it or eat it. Okay. And so um, we, our bylaws are whatever is created. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess that might have been put in there. I don't know. I'm not part of it, but maybe that was put in there to keep it from becoming a flea market. Right. I'm you sure know. that that was it. Um, so we're set up so it's anything that you create, grow, anything like that that's that's uh, has human um, involvement mm -hmm. a, of some sort to make something. So we also include farmers market people in our artisan market, which um, then took a back seat to we were given um, an opportunity with a donated space in the Lafayette Square building to have a shop space, so it was basically the, the artisan market in um, a shop space, and so we called it the artisan shop. Mm -hmm. And then the artisan shop um, 
another space nearby in the same building opened up and the owners of the building, the Lanes of Lane Capital, um, donated both spaces to us and we used the second space as a studio for artisans to teach classes. So um, then the Lafayette building uh, is being completely totally renovated and so we had to move out for that renovation um, and we're very excited about that and new businesses are moving mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. but we had to move out and stay out because we were given the spaces before, donated the spaces that we existed in with the shop and the studio. And, and we now they weren't paying customers. Now we can't yeah, afford the rent we to go back. Afford it. Yeah. So um, we looked around town and found um, a nice little building near, thir near uh, Pine Street on 3rd, 749 3rd. And it's near, the, there it is. Mm -hmm. And um, it needed a lot of love, um, and we had a wonderful gentleman um, who's a semi-retired uh, contractor in construction, Tim Rausch, who came and donated all of his time to help renovate the building and um, donated a lot of his uh, construction materials, materials yeah. as well. And so we're in the first phase, and it's presentable to the public. It looks pretty good, and then we still have a second or third phase to go. With, and little um, tweaks here and there, yeah, but yeah. yeah. But it's it's a really nice space, and um, it's been provided to us um, by Steve Thomas, my loving, caring, generous husband who is going to be so kind to wait till we can afford rent. But we do pay utilities, so we are responsible now for actual bills mm -hmm. to exist in this space, but. Okay, is there another shot of the interior? There we go. That's, mm -hmm. that's from the, um, the front, front looking counter. Back. Mm -hmm. And in the back you'll see people, they're taking a string art class that's and our classroom number one. Yeah, and pretty much everything, like the floors, the wall, the ceiling, pretty much all of that was redone in one way or another. The ceiling we painted, and uh, the walls are completely new. The panels that were there before were taken out, and they're uh, completely new walls put together. And um, that floor is beautiful flooring that was partially donated to us by um, floors and more and um, it's beautiful we've gotten so many compliments and it's high quality is it vinyl and it's waterproof and uh, a lot of work went into getting this place you know presentable and what it looks like now and these are a couple of the friendly faces that might greet you when you come in the door I have no idea who that person is on the left side. Yeah. I mean, what a weirdo. <laughs> but a beautiful person on the right is Clarissa Cauldron, mm -hmm. and she has worked for us for three years. Is it two years? Two, yeah. And her sister Addie is actually our curator. She does not get paid for that position, but we sure appreciate her time donated to mm -hmm. making sure we have our art on our gallery walls. Mm -hmm. So this is in the front window yes. and the person that makes those stained glasses puts on classes so you can do that, right? Yes. yes. You oh, can she, actually, is the upcoming one a Fleur de Lis? Yes, that's this Saturday actually. And right. it's not that one, but it's just the standalone Fleur de Lis without, you know, the whole square background. Mm -hmm. And um, she tries to have classes pretty regularly, at least once a month, I'd say, sometimes mm -hmm. more than once a month. And um, she also does the cake decorating classes. So she does um, three different courses of cake decorating that are all um, four weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. And so I think that class there is like forty or fifty dollars, right? That one. 
I believe it's fifty dollars. Yeah. yeah, but the the price is vary depending on what the stained glass project is. Um, you know, it can be a lot less or it can be a little bit more. But when you do the stained glass project, you don't have to cut the glass. No, she that's the, to she, me that's the scary yeah. part. She generally cuts it. She has offered classes for people that are really interested in getting into stained glass themselves. Um, she's offered the opportunity to, uh, you know, for them to cut it themselves, mm -hmm. um, just because they want to get really serious about. Yeah, a whole bunch of people possibly, broke it. but hopefully, <laughs> you know, it'd be like simple things that you know, like a little bit foolproof, mm -hmm. like patterns, but. Um, Every class, even though she has the pieces cut for that project, she has just a, a piece of glass so people know what it's like to cut it, and mm. it won't be used in that project. Right. But it's like this is the process. This is you know how you cut Scoring it and it break and it. Yeah, that sort of thing. So it's really cool. We did that, and mm -hmm. I I was really scared because <laughs> I I didn't want to get cut, but. Yeah, it's it's really cool to at least see the process, even if you're just doing like a part of that project. Um, it's a lot of knowledge that she gives you. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'd be scared of it. I just afraid it would just all shatter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, She's a really good teacher. Yeah, though. So her name's Tracy French, by mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. And yes. she's she had a couple shows on exposition, one with yes. the cake, cake decorating, decorating and one with the stained glass. Yes. Yes. And so at the shop you can buy some things or if you are a uh, crafter, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. bring things there. Right. How does that work? Do you guys do it on a percentage or is this rent space or, or what? It's a little bit of both. So all it's the, evolved into Yeah, this. it's evolved into this since we do have more uh, responsibilities with paying bills now at this location. Um, but each shelf space uh, is about the same and we have different displays that people can use so when somebody's renting space in the shop they would use our available displays mm -hmm. and so one shelf would be ten dollars per month and it would you know you just add ten dollars if you want three shelves then you know you'd pay thirty dollars mm -hmm. per month and um, we also take ten percent of those sales That's and that all and you, you pay the sales tax Yes, we yes. collect and pay the sales tax so people don't need a vendor's license to have items in our shop. Okay, well that's cool. But, yeah, and all the money that we collect through, um, you know, the rent and, and percentages uh, for classes and the shop, that all goes back into our nonprofit organization. We are volunteers, we work for free, and we just put all of that money, you know, back into the business to help, you know, pay our bills and continue and, mm -hmm. you know, flyers or, you know, other little expenses that we have. So we, we aren't personally getting rich off of this. We're just trying to provide something that we feel is needed in the community and we want to promote and educate people about arts and culture. So that's our thing and kind of everything we do is just to keep building that and you know supporting that mission. Mm -hmm. What else we got as far as pictures? Okay, this is a class, and this I think was string art. Yes, yes. string art. Did they uh, do their own design? Yeah, this um, this one pick? was called Open Design String Art, and um, the teacher was handling you know all the communications and planning for everybody's projects. But um, I know she has a a sample amount of designs that people can choose from okay. and I'm sure if someone has an idea like if they say I want the shape of Ohio but I want a heart in it or I want this and that mm. then she can make that design and right. you know show you how to do it okay so yeah and everybody it's kind of in the back yes. of the shop so yeah. it's kind of like from the back facing forward yes 
I really love how how long and open our new space is instead of these, you know, like teeny little rooms that we had, mm -hmm. which we loved. We loved the Lafayette building, but but us. this is a really nice um, change and has a really good flow to it. With you know, there's still enough separation between where we sit at the counter and the class space for enough privacy, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it's still all there and it doesn't feel so closed off. And we have good air conditioner and no, it's, good. it's comfy. It was a little sketchy at the other place. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't have a big enough air conditioner there, but we do now and uh, we have the heater lovely, works cuz the when heater we works. first started working mm -hmm. on the building it was cold. Yeah. And there's there's a so. monster heater that hangs from the ceiling mm -hmm. and heats the whole place. Yes. Yes. And then the next phase will be um, So I guess these are for sale. What? No. Well, we want to keep those. No? <laughs> no. no. Well, you told me they were for sale. Well, no. <laughs> no. They're very comfortable. They're comfortable They're for very, people very who are like not taking a class, but they might be waiting for their mm, okay. child, sister, mother, father, brother, uncle, person. Yeah. Okay. That, um, the, so they just sit there and read or on their phone, maybe. There's the evolution of our logos pretty much a little out of order but mm -hmm. we started with that center to first the right one. Mm -hmm. yeah and then to the left yeah we started with the middle one and mm -hmm. then addy created the one on the right which we turned Our into curator yeah a shirt design and then um with this new space i wanted to make a new logo so we just had a really nice fresh start and those are the shirts that we're wearing right now with that triangle logo that you can purchase in the shop yes. and mugs yes we have mugs and shirts so this so you have oh, art hanging yes Beautiful. this everything on the walls in the in the front space that's all gallery art so that's not shop space it'll change out every couple months so about. this is not necessarily for sale um, they usually are. Be. They usually are for sale. Okay. Um, but yeah, those. These are available. This actual show is, um, and I think our future shows will have many pieces mm -hmm. that are available um, to purchase in print form. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think we've got some pictures of that too. Yeah. So these. Those were um, taken down from our last show, our opening show, inspired by Appalachia. Hmm. And then uh, Valerie's dolly unicorn is in there, too. We're trying to get some pieces together to display at Zach and Scotty's because they've so kindly given us a full wall, um, you know, to promote our gallery okay. art and ourselves. So. That's a little bit more of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of this is, well, professional yeah. uh, artists. Yeah, yes. we work From with professional area. artists. Mm -hmm. Local yeah. people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talent around here. There sure and is. And that looks like a photograph, but it's not. It's not. It that is, is yeah. a watercolor. Watercolor. Yes. From uh, Courtney, Courtney Ritchie. Yep. Yes. And she's been on the show before and mm -hmm. massively talented. Yes, yes. multi. Mm -hmm. like she also does the glass and different things, which we'll have mm -hmm. later. Here's your T-shirts. Is yeah. that what's on the right? Is that a? That's a tank top. Tank top. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Good for summer wear, mm -hmm. for sure. And this is immediately when you walk in. It's gourds yeah. and Those are dream catchers and different things. Dream yeah. catchers, and then the top is uh, Tracy's glass. stained glass. Throw little flower crowns in there too. <laughs> there are those two lovely ladies working very, very hard. You know, it looks like I'm texting, but I'm doing a lot of social media work. So <laughs> well, that's what you call it, social media work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's this. And Courtney soap. also makes soap. Soap yes. and lotion from her own goat's milk. Right. Yes. Yes. And now, do you she use any of this? Yes. I have before, yes. yes. we have. And I love it. And it's just And I guess awesome. there's lotions in the back there. Yes. And, and there's and one, one of her of, paintings. Yeah. Her watercolor, it's bunnies. And then... More um, baby gourds. Nancy Vanko. Yeah, oh, okay. Those are like 
I mean, you can use them for anything you want, but um, those can be ornaments. And there are little Ohio State ornaments up there. And the larger ones that are on that. Oh, and mm -hmm. then there's this. Oh, yeah. There's, um, there's her larger gourds. She has um, cut holes in them, and you can hang them for birdhouses. Those are the ones that were on the big round uh, display when you just walk in. Okay. Yeah. And you can see her at the Bob Evans Farm Festival as, as mm -hmm. well as Courtney. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they both won awards last yes. year. Yes, Nancy the Farm won first place. First place, and Courtney won second, right? And I think Courtney yes. won something at the French Art Colony thing for the Fourth of July too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and one of our other artists, um, Pam Conley, as well. We mm -hmm. have we just tons of award-winning artisans yes. at our disposal for you know purchasing their products, or they can teach you things. So it's or pretty cool. custom work, yeah. or um, they can also do restoration work as well. Mm -hmm. We have a list of, of artisans that will that will restore some of your own craft pieces or art pieces, or whether jewelry. paintings or jewelry. Yeah, they can repair jewelry and baskets and things like that. Okay, so, cool. Yes. Didn't know about that one. Yes. I guess these are just. Some wall hangings or something? Yeah. Yes, yeah. license plates that are cut. Um, the letters and numbers are cut and then uh, reconfigured to create words or symbols or um, anything you want. Those are some of the prints that are available um, from the gallery pieces. And I can't read it, but I think they're very reasonably priced, like what, 10 bucks yeah, to that, 15 or 20? That was right. uh, what Addie wanted for this show. Um, the theme is home, so whatever anybody you know can interpret from that, whatever type of imagery um, you know they associate with home, and she wanted it to be a print show, so even if it's original pieces of art hanging, uh, people can purchase prints of that because mm -hmm. a lot of people can't afford, you know, a $300 painting. Right. So they could get a custom size of that painting, a print version for a, you know, a much more affordable price. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's a very cool concept. And this is yeah, some of Courtney's awesome. uh, jewelry made yes. out of glass. One of the Tree of Life pieces. And then now she's also added uh, memorial things with you if you have, I guess, a relative or a, yeah. a pet or somebody who's been cremated. She'll take mm -hmm. some of the ashes and mix up into it. Yes. Yeah, she she has um, a brochure in our shop that anybody can come and pick up, and there are some sample pieces on there of what you could get um, with that. But she can really incorporate the ashes into any of her pieces. Mm -hmm. So if there's something custom that you would want, or you know anything you see in the shop, she can she can recreate that. Okay. And the hours it looks like yeah. not Sunday. But not every, and Sunday not and not Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, not today. Uh, we, we started out with our uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday hours, and then opening our new location, we wanted to add more days and times, and um, since the other days available would be weekdays and a lot of people work, we wanted to add some evening hours, mm -hmm. so if we schedule classes, people would actually be able to come after work. So right. that's why it seems a little random with the four to seven, but that's just to better accommodate. Um, you know, evening classes after work in school. So you came on on uh, Gal Police on 160, mm -hmm. and you come in and go past the Pine Street Cemetery and like the second right yes. on Third mm -hmm. Avenue. Yeah, it's just a not even 100 yards on your left. It's a building. Yes, a building away from the intersection on the left, and um, to the right, we are starting. A, um, the lot to the right of our building. We're starting a community garden. If you're interested, mm -hmm. please contact us. We need a lot of help and um, we have some of the, the starting materials there, but um, you know, need some muscles and um, people that have knowledge about gardening because I'm not 
knowledgeable. So I need help. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have that and then our fall festival mm -hmm. um, coming That's up. That's another thing you guys do is the uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, Cultural that's that festival. was our Bowling first parade. big fundraiser was starting St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. And then um, just last year was our first year adding Fall Festival as our another big fundraiser because people kept saying, oh, you should do something in the fall. And so we're like, okay, we'll do a Fall Festival and, you know, fill that need. But um, that is set for Saturday, October 6th from 4 to 8 p.m. And um, we'll have everything that we had last year and uh, some big plans for a lot lot more so we're excited. That seemed to go over very well. Yes, it was people very well love attended. fall. We yes. were blessed with a beautiful day mm -hmm. too. Yeah. It was sunny Which is always morning. sketchy on the uh, the spring St. Patrick's, Saint Patrick's Day thing. Yes. March is always a little iffy. iffy March, March sure. really loves to imitate actual Irish weather yeah. <laughs> and we don't always like it but we you know we're there <laughs> but um, yeah we're excited for fall so you've fest. got those two festivals mm -hmm. yes is that all that's going on outside of the shop itself um, we we set up a lot of other places whenever we the get a farm chance festival. farm festival and we try to do pop-ups at um, the raised around Rio market and uh, we set up at Barbecue Festival. We just set up at River Recreation Festival for the four. And now the and new vineyard. Yeah. We have our classes out at the new, new vineyard. Yeah, Twisted Vine Twisted Family Vine. Vineyard, yeah. We'll be there tomorrow night yes. with Ashton Saunders succulent. doing succulent yes. container gardening. Yes. So, and we've had um, Tracy French's stained glass, mm -hmm. and we've had um, well, next month we're going to have you painting. Oh, that's right. That's yep. right. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we'll keep adding, hopefully, because that's yeah. a great place to have classes. So whether you want to purchase any of these things, uh, take classes to learn how to do these things, or maybe you're a crafter artist and you want an outlet for your uh, creativity, uh, contact these guys. Go down there, check it out, and uh, maybe you can arrange something to get your things seen and yes. sold. Yes, we're always looking for new folks who um, need a place to call home for their their arts and crafts and, and we're um, always performing taking, and visual arts. We're always taking new teachers too. Yes, mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. teachers. Yeah. So they're looking to grow. All right, thanks for telling us about the artisan shop and market. And thanks for having us. Okay. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah. That's right. fun. And thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time on Exposition.